Another guest who appeared with Grodin on Geraldo's sensationalistic program was Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory is one of America's foremost comedians, but it would really be a grave injustice to leave his introduction with that one simple statement because he's a complex man, a humanitarian who lectures and writes extensively in the interest of human rights and social justice. His comedy doesn't just make people laugh, it makes them think as well. Please welcome Dick Gregory. When I started listening to the theories that Lee Harvey Oswald was the lone uh, assailant, and then things started coming out that we didn't know before, that the parade route had been changed, and then when you find out that Lee Harvey Oswald, the day that uh, President Kennedy made the announcement he was going to Dallas, and right after that, he got a job at the Book Depository. Now, if the parade route wasn't planned on going that way, then he had set himself up in the wrong location, or he knew something. Now, if Lee Harvey Oswell do not have the ability and the power and the rank and position to change the parade route, then who did? And from that point, I started, you know, really looking into it. I, uh, I met a very brilliant gentleman in London at the time named uh, Ralph Shunman, who had also been looking into it. And as I started meeting various people that was looking for something else, I found out that there was a whole, like, occult out here that didn't believe it, but we just kept looking and kept waiting for the press. And then when they said they would have the Warren Commission, this stopped everything because we knew that these loose ends would be tied in, and they never were. On point after point, Gregory didn't know what he was talking about. Oswald was on a bus traveling to Mexico and trying to get into Cuba when President Kennedy's visit to Texas was first announced on September 26th. Oswald was hired at the School Book Depository on October 15th, after applying to multiple jobs elsewhere. The Dallas parade route was not selected until November 18th, and only made public on the 19th. The parade route was never changed, but there was a slight misprint in the Dallas Morning News the morning of the president's arrival, which failed to show the turn from Maine to Houston, and Houston to Elm. If the motorcade had stayed on Main Street, it would not have been able to get onto the freeway exit, which is only accessible from Elm Street. Like many conspiracists before and after him, it is clear that Gregory was not turned away from believing the Warren report. He was actively looking for false information that fit his predetermined conclusion. Gregory went on to write a book with Mark Lane about the alleged conspiracy behind Dr. King's death, and he has continued to sink into the black hole of make-believe since then, questioning the validity of the moon landing and the real story behind 9-11. It's funny the much knowledge you all have about the system. I had some of you tell me what a bad president he is. All of them bad. Hmm? All of them bad. How many of y'all know Roosevelt was a coke addict? On you know, December the 7th, when he declared war, he was so coked out, his wife had to sign the problem. How many of y'all know that? Hmm? That's a game. You haven't had a president in the White House that wasn't controlled by the big boys. Huh? We do not know what medical treatments President Roosevelt used to combat his persistent sinus infections. But there was a nasal medication commonly used at the time that contained some cocaine in it. It has been speculated that this medication may have been given to FDR. Even if this inference could be proven, there is no evidence that the president was a cokehead, snorting pure powder, and unable to even sign his own name. Nor is there any evidence that any big boys were able to tell him what to do. But this is the logic of the conspiracist mindset. As Gregory once said, it's like a cult. See, what you have on is the universal magic glasses. It is responsibility to go with it. Once you put the magic glasses on, you can never take them off. 
and you can't force what you see on people who don't have the magic glasses. In America, you've been taught to see how it's supposed to be. You know how it is. And that would hurt a lot of people, your family members, who haven't reached that level yet. 